welcome back to my channel. My name is Jennifer and this is Spectacular Yarns podcast number five. The last time I filmed a podcast was in March, so it's been quite a while. Today is September 4th. So since then, I've actually reached over 3,000 subscribers, which is really, really great. So hi to all my new subscribers and welcome back to all my returning viewers. It's been so long that I feel like I need to kind of make another introduction. So I'm going to make a quick introduction to all my new viewers. Again, my name is Jennifer. I currently live in Colorado Springs with my husband and my two dogs who like to make an appearance from time to time. Um, let's see, I love all things crafts. I love to knit, obviously. I love to sew and quilt and cross stitch and diamond paint and I crochet from time to time. A little bit of everything. I actually was having a lot of trouble trying to figure out how I wanted to share all these crafts with you guys because I initially had, and um, some, of, some of you may know that I initially had a floss tube channel which is basically a cross stitch channel that we share here on YouTube and I used to cross stitch all the time and I've kind of converted now to knitting. I haven't done much cross stitching, but I still love it and I still um, I still do that from time to time as well as sewing and quilting and all the other things. So I was trying to figure out, for, the, for a while now, I've been trying to figure out how I wanted to film my videos. And I think I've decided that I'm just gonna have one video that I will film and I will have timestamps for the different areas of that craft. Um, I will start off with knitting and then I kind of will go into the other crafts for those of you who are interested in the other areas and if you're not that's totally fine you could just kind of skip it by and um, I think that's going to be the best way to do it because I think it's too much to do different videos and to kind of separate everything so I hope that you guys enjoy that um, and I hope you know I feel like a lot of us craft um, are very crafty and we kind of jump around between different crafts so hopefully um, we can relate on some of the other crafts so like I said it's been a while since I filmed a video so I have some notes I have a lot of things to share so let's just jump right in and toward the end of the video I'll kind of talk about what I've been up to and why I haven't filmed for such a long time okay so first I want to share my finished object this is my so faded sweater by Andrea Mowry it is a bit wrinkled because I finished it in April. Um, I believe this is my first ever finished sweater besides a baby sweater that I made, but I'll talk about that later. But this is my first ever finished sweater for myself and I am proud of it. There's definitely things I would change. It's not perfect. This jog right here really bothers me where I had to switch colors. Um, if I could go back, I would definitely have done that a little bit differently. And then the other thing is that it came out too big. I get, I guess my gauge just got bigger or something. I don't know. But what I ended up doing is I ended up surging this, which was terrifying, but I knew I wouldn't wear it, um, you know, with the fit that it had. So I went ahead and I risked it and I surged it. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I actually filmed like a vlog style video and kind of brought you guys along with me and it ended up fitting a lot better and I'm happy that I surged it and I will link that video down below if you're curious um, or if you have a sweater that's maybe too big and you don't wear it and you want to try surging it maybe you'll get some inspiration or some tips um, on what I did in that video below but it does fit me a lot better I will say that it's still too long but I'd rather it longer than wider. So I'm okay with it. I'm going to make it work. I can't wait to wear it this winter. Um, I did use um, Spectacular Yarns, which is my hand dyed yarn company, um, for all the colorways. Let's see, the top one has not been released yet, but these bottom three, um, let's see if I remember, uh, Dusty Rose, Rose Tea, and Warmth are the colorways. I will link everything down below. Um, I do love the colors. I do love the fade. I would definitely go down a few needle sizes if I can go back, but it's okay. It was a learning experience and I'm still very proud of it. Proud of it. I can't even speak. And 
yeah, I will link that blog down below so you can see how this fit me before and after I surged it as well. Okay, next, really exciting news. Since the last time I filmed, I have a new baby niece that I'm really excited about and she is the first grandbaby for my mom so we're all very excited. We have yet to meet her. She was born in the beginning of July and again we ha none of us have met her. Um, my sister lives in, my sister and my brother-in-law live in Maryland so it's quite a way and we would have to travel to go see her which is not very safe right now. But I am hoping to go see her toward the end of October and meet her and yeah, I'm really, really excited about that. And I had made a few items for um, Demi is her name, D-E-M-I. I had made a few items for Demi before she was born and I had shipped them over to my sister for the virtual baby shower that we did. And I filmed a little clip of the items before I shipped them out so I could share it with you guys and so I will go ahead and insert that now. Hey guys, so I'm about to ship out some items to my sister and brother-in-law for the virtual baby shower we're having next week and I wanted to share with you the things that I'm sending before I send them off. So this is the Bumble Beanie by Tin Can Knits. It was really easy and quick to make. And then I also knit this sweater. This is the teddy bear sweater. Let's see if I can get a better. So this is the teddy bear sweater by Petite Knits. It was quick and easy as well. And the yarn that I used for both of these um, was the Spectacular Yarns. It's a girl colorway, which I dyed and um, created specifically for this purpose so I love the way that this little set came out and this is about a six month size right here I also crocheted <laughs> it's not perfect this is my first ever amigurumi I believe that's how you pronounce it um, I tried <laughs> it's a little it's a little lopsided but I tried and they love cats so I thought it would be perfect and then I also sewed up these little shoes my sister loves Beauty and the Beast so I had to make some Beauty and the Beast shoes for the baby and then last is this quilt that I made let me see if I can show you guys. So here is the quilt. I love the way it came out. I, um, I used something called Scrap Crazy. Let me show you really quick. So I used this Scrap Crazy set of rulers and then it comes with this book I bought this years and years ago and I made the semi formal and I love the way that it came out I don't know what fabric I used it was in my stash but they're little like bunnies and I love the way it came out. I did free motion quilting, um, just some stippling. And then on the back I used this very soft fabric. And I added a quilt label. So I'm about to ship all this out. I'm really excited. I'm really happy how everything came out. And yeah. So I had a lot of fun making all those things for Demi. And since then I have also made some socks, which I do not have with me. I have shipped those out, but I will insert a picture here. So the pattern is called 
Perfect Newborn Socks by Tabitha Gandy. I'll link it down below. I love this pattern. It has a ribbed version and a cabled version. And the first time that I tried to make these socks, I did a ribbed version and the socks actually came out different sizes. Um, I wasn't really counting my rows or anything like that. And so yeah, that was kind of a fail. But the second time I ended up doing the cabled version and I counted my rows and they came out pretty similar in size. So I'm really happy with them. I shipped those out. And um, yesterday, actually, my sister sent me a picture of Demi wearing the socks and they fit her very, very well. So I'm really happy about that. I used um, yarn from La Bionne May that uh, my sister and brother-in-law chose when they went to Paris last year and they mailed me the, um, the yarn to make socks for Demi. So really happy about that. I highly recommend that pattern. I'm definitely gonna be making more socks using that pattern. I think both versions are beautiful. And if you have a newborn, um, you know, do soon, or you know somebody who is going to have a baby soon, then I highly recommend this pattern. Okay, so I think that's it for finished objects. I have kind of a half finished object and I'm gonna kind of go into whips or they might be new starts to you guys because I haven't shown anything in a while. So I'm gonna start off with a failed attempt at a DK sock. Um, so I recently finished this sock and it's just too small, it's too narrow. And I was following this pattern called, let me see here, DK Rib Socks by Simone Burns. I will link it down below. Now I, I'm making them, shorter than what the pattern calls for and also they're supposed to be ribbed and I just decided to start doing stockinette and I forgot to start the ribbing and I just decided to keep going and just do the whole thing stockinette which was not the best idea because obviously ribbing stretches and either way I think they were just way too small I used um, too small of a needle I think I used a US one and this is DK um, and I only did that because my um, tension is really loose and so I did engage swatch for this and that's that's what I get for not swatching um but I will say DK socks go a lot quicker than fingering weight and I do like the um, fabric that it makes so that being said I cast it on another pair and this time I made them longer these are going to be for my husband and we've already tried them on, you know, just I put some um, waist yarn and tried it on him yesterday and they fit pretty well. They're like a little bit snug, barely anything, but when I block it, I think it's going to be perfect and I'm using a size three DPNs in my Licka needles. And I am really enjoying this. It's going by so quickly. I really should not be working on this because I have other things that I need to work on. Um, but I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm using Spectacular Yarns um, colorways in Wicked, which is this like charcoal black color with a little bit of like reddish in there. It's so hard to explain. And then this blue color is called Out of the Blue. And it's this tonal blue which I love this color so that is going very very well I'm loving it and I can't wait to finish finish it and block it and just be done with it um yeah I really want to work on this this is probably the thing that I want to work on the most right now but I just haven't had much time so um yeah DK socks this was a fail but you know it's a learning experience and um, I'm still not gonna swatch because I get lazy to swatch. Um, this is Dusty Rose and Wicked, by the way, if you're curious. Okay, so next. I don't even know what to talk about next. I'll just grab this bag, let's see. This I cast it on about two months ago. This is the Daybreak Shawl by Stephen West. And I have a little bit of progress. This is what it's looking like. 
I haven't worked on this for a while. I did um, travel to California a few months ago and this was my, um, I guess my travel companion. <laughs> this is what I took with me and I haven't worked on it since honestly, but I really do want to, it's beautiful. I'm loving the colors. So these are the two colors that I'm using. This is my hand dyed yarn, Spectacular Yarns in the color Sunrise. And then this other yarn, let me see. This one here is by La Bionna May and it's in the color Tickle. So I think that they are gonna go very well together. I can't wait to add this color in because I would love to see how it's gonna work together. So I have that going and I need to work on that. I'm just grabbing bags at this point. Okay, so this is a mystery knit along that I started several months ago. It's already over and I never, I never um, continued working on it basically. So, First of all, I just had a moment because I freaked out because this is happening. But I remembered that I took out the needles to use it for something else and I have scrap yarn in here. But this is what it's looking like. This is the Festival of Stitches Knit Along by Lisa Haynes. This was, um, when was this released? I. I honestly don't even remember when this was released. Um, everyone's done with it pretty much, except for me. <laughs> Although I am really loving the colors and this is the first time that I did baubles. And let's see, the yarns that I'm using are, let's see here. So I'm using a Hue Loco yarn and two Oolan yarns. And I'm trying to remember which is what. Um, so I think this one is Hue Loco in the color Sonata. And these are all single ply. And then this is Oolan. These two are Oolan yarns and I want to say this one's called, oh, I don't know which is which. I think this one's called Metsy and this one's called Ear. I don't know. I will link them down below. Um, I don't know how to pronounce them. I'm horrible and I don't remember which is what. So it's been a while, obviously. Um, they're all single ply. I do really love the colors. I love how they're playing together. I love learning how to do new things like the baubles, um, but I just have not worked on it at all. And I am loving the color combination. I have a long way to go on this. Okay. Is this my last, my last one? I think this might be my last cast on. And it's my current, um, like main project that I've been working on. And this is a current knit along that I really am trying to catch up because I don't want to repeat what I just showed you and just not have any progress. So this is by um, Casa Pinka, and it is the Sharon Show. I'm sure many of you have heard about it. Today is Friday, September 4th, and they just released Clue 5, and I'm currently working on Clue 3. <laughs> um, and here is my progress. I am loving this. Some areas I will say get a little, like they just take so much time I feel like, but I do really love this for a few reasons. 
One, I love the colors and I will share those in a little bit. But also, I feel like all the sections are like mini finishes and I feel like I'm learning new stitches and new things. It almost feels like a class. You know what I mean? It feels like a weekly homework assignment or something that I actually enjoy. So I have been really loving it. I've been trying to not fall more than a week behind, which I officially am behind more than a week. Um, I've been trying so hard to get this section done up here, but it consists of um, like, well, I don't wanna say the pattern, but basically you have to um, pass stitches over, which I'm usually pretty slow and careful about because I just don't want my stitches to fall off the needle. So I think that's why it's been taking me so long. Um, so I did try to get a lot of progress last night and I'm almost done. I need a few more rows to be done with this section. And then hopefully I can um, breeze through the other sections and catch up so that I'm only a week behind and not more than a week behind. So this is what I'm gonna work on today. Hopefully I can get a lot of progress done. Um, and I will be posting pictures on my Instagram if you're interested. Now, let's talk about yarn because kind of splurged for this project. I was so excited and I found colors that I liked and they just happened to be Emma's yarn and Halla Hanks instead of regular sized Hanks. So I will have, more than likely, I'm gonna have a lot of leftovers, enough for another project, I would say. Which is great because then I have, you know, more things in this beautiful yarn that I love. So, Again, these are all Emma's yarns and the Hella Hank, which if you're not familiar with the Hella Hank, it is equivalent to about a yarn, um, like a yarn and a half of like a full skein. So it is 600 yards, 150 grams, which normally yarns are 100 grams. So the colors are, um, let's see here, I'm missing one, looks like. Oh no, here it is. So this gray one is called Gray Scale. Um, this one here is called Gatsby. And these last two, I don't know which is which, which is which, so I, I have no idea. One is Drops of Jupiter and one is arches I will link everything down below again um, I love the colors together I think they play really really nicely um, I had gone to the local yarn shop here called you and me and I couldn't decide on what color combination I wanted I kind of wanted to go bright but then I had just started that Stephen West shawl with bright colors. And so I figured I'd go something that's a little more wearable. And I'm really glad that I did. Although a lot of people have been sharing their progress on the Share and Show Facebook group. And there's some bright colors that are beautiful. I love them so much. Um, but I think I'm gonna wear this a lot. Um, I cannot wait to be done with this. And I really want to be done no later than, what are we in, September? No later than the end of September. That is my goal. So that is what I have been working on a lot. This is usually what's next to me right now. And I just printed out clue five, even though I'm not there yet. But I'm gonna work on that later. And hopefully I can get those socks finished, the DK socks for my husband. And, yeah, I think that's, let me double check my notes here. I think those are all the um, whips that I have right now. Let's see here. No, I'm missing. Oh, I don't think I brought it. So I am missing one thing and I'm gonna go grab it really quick. Okay, Whew. now that I'm out of breath from running up and down the stairs. So this is my newest cast on and 
It is called the, let's see here, the Everyday Slouchy Beanie by Dragon Horde Designs. I don't have much progress, but I did do a provisional cast on and I've knit a few, um, a few rounds. I love this pattern. I've made it before. I have a beanie that I wear all the time. Well, it's summertime now, but I wore it all the time last winter. I love it so much that I knew that I needed to make another one, but not as slouchy and something that was a little bit more um, like of a wearable color. So I got this yarn specifically for this project. This is... La Bionna May, and I do not know how to pronounce that color. I'll link it down below, but my um, sister picked this up for me when she went to La Bionna May when she was in Paris last year with her husband, and they got this yarn for me. It's like the perfect gray with some teals and purples and pinks. I love it. I love it so much and I have been just waiting for the right moment to cast this on and now that it's getting a little closer to getting cold here, I know that I need to make this because I'm going to wear it all the time. And let's see, I this pattern is initially for, well it was written for fingering held with mohair, but I am doing mine in DK because the first time I did it in DK and I love the way it came out so I'm not going to change anything. I think in the future I might try to make another one with fingering and mohair held together. So um, I actually started this with Amanda, who's Amanda Knits on Instagram. I'll link her down below. She is a hand dyed yarn dyer here in Colorado as well. And her and I have become friends and we decided to cast this on together and I'm so happy that I did. I can't wait to be done with it. Um, it is one of my priorities after my knit along and my socks for my husband. So between those three projects, I've really been, um, you know, working on those the most. Those are the three projects that are currently downstairs with me by the couch. Those are the ones that I have been grabbing lately. So I think now that those are all my, um, new start slash whips. Now those are not all my whips because I have a lot of other whips that I just haven't paid attention to and I will eventually get to. But for now, these are the ones that I don't think you guys have seen. So let's talk a little bit about acquisitions. Things that I've gotten that I love. So first off is this bag by my friend Cassie. She's Cassie Stitches here on YouTube. I will link her down below as well as her Instagram, but she mailed me this super cute project bag with the sheep and I absolutely love it. This is currently where I have my everyday slouchy beanie project in and it's just so satisfying, the drawstring closure. Um, I absolutely love this. She also sent me a um, project bag for cross stitch, which I have downstairs and I forgot to bring it up, but I have a new start in there. Um, that I kitted up and I have it ready to go and I forgot it downstairs so I will show that next time and hopefully I will have um, a cross stitch finished finished object to share with it words okay so apart from that um, I have some yarn some yarn that I want to share as well now some of these are from Amanda, who I just spoke about, Amanda Knits. I will link her down below. She has beautiful yarn. I, you know, as you know, I am a yarn dyer, but I love to support other yarn dyers. And, you know, I love yarn in general. I love colors. So, you know, I use my yarn a lot, but I love to use other people's yarn as well. So I will link her down below, but she is Amanda Knits. If you could see that. And this is her color, Can't Eat This Starburst. And then she has this one called Blowing Raspberries, which I absolutely love. And then this one is called Sassy Unicorn. I think this is so, so fun. And I'm definitely going to be making socks with this one. I love it so much. These are all fingering weight. Um, she has different bases. This one's 100% Superwash Merino. 
This one's 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and then this one over here is also 75-25. Um, love these. And then I recently um, got this one from her. This one's called The Haunted House. It's 80% Superwash Merino, 10% Nylon, 10% Cashmere, and this is a DK weight. This is beautiful. I love this so, so much. It's so soft and squishy. And by the way, she, um, I don't know if it's still open, but she's having a Harry Potter yarn club that I might have signed up for. So I will be showing that when I get it. Um, and I think she's, she has a sale going on right now for the holiday weekend, I think. I will link her down below. Highly recommend that you check her out. Also, I have gotten um, a few more yarns. This one is by The Lemonade Shop and it's called Toxic Hippo. I love this so much. I definitely want to make socks with this. And then I also um, got this Explorer Knits yarn in Joshua Tree National Park. Now, Allie is the, the dyer behind um, Explorer Knits and she actually sent me this um, as a little gift because she, this, this was several months ago, but she had posted something um, on Instagram asking people to, oh, it's been so long, I don't even remember, asking people to, I guess, um, recognize, um, people in their lives who um, they care about, who are hard workers, things like that. And so I got nominated and I was able to get this beautiful yarn that I absolutely love. It's a two ply. And I'm not sure, I feel like I that needs to be a shawl of some sort. So those are all the new yarns that I got. Okay, so something that's very new to me <clears throat> that I have not even touched because I'm just, I have no idea. <laughs> so when I went to go see Amanda, she let me borrow this so I could learn how to spin. Have I touched this at all? No, because I'm terrified. I have no idea what to do. I need to watch a video or something. She started it for me and I, it, I brought it home and I literally put it down like this. I have no idea what I'm doing. I want to learn, but I'm just terrified. I have no idea. I need, I need to figure this out. I need to find a video and figure out how to do this. So if you have any recommendations, let me know. Um, also, I want to start a new project soon, maybe after, um, maybe after the knit along so that I can really focus on the knit along. But I'm beginning to have um, a lot of scraps. I haven't been knitting too long. It's probably been a year and a half and I'm starting to accumulate um, just a lot of like little scraps. So I wanted to find some sort of scrappy project that I can start putting all my scraps into and I have been looking at different things for months now, trying to figure out exactly what I want to do. And I finally, I kept going back to this pattern and I finally gave in. This is the Northeasterly um, blanket pattern by um, Skeinanigans, which is Melissa Alexander Loomis. I will link it down below. And I just love the little... Um, sections that you make and then you kind of combine them together. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two versions. I'm going to have one more like neutral version and one more like brights. So I have some scraps in here in this. Whew, oh my goodness. Um, I have some scraps in here. Some are a little bigger than others. I'm definitely not going to use all of this, but I'm going to go ahead and start this. I kind of started yesterday um, just to kind of see how time consuming it is. I did a few rows and then I, I just ripped it out. I just wanted to get an idea before actually starting. And I wanted to see how big the um, 
the columns were coming out because they're supposed to be about three inches and my tension's always all over the place. So I, let me see, it calls for, let's see, for DK weight, it calls for US 5, which is 3.75 millimeter needle. I used a four, which is a 3.5 millimeter. Wait, how does that make sense? Yeah, I guess. So I used a US four DPNs and it just came out too big. It was almost four inches wide of a column instead of three inches. So I'm gonna go down to a US three and just work on that. Now I am a little confused about the pattern because it does say that you can use fingering and decay and it says that it's it's a great technique to hold fingering double so so I thought okay I can use fingering held double or decay and just kind of go to town but then it has um recommended needle size for just fingering weight um and it has different cast on and everything for the fingering weight so now I'm thinking, can I do fingering weight that's not held double and just use small, smaller needles and I would get the same gauge as the DK or the fingering held double? Is that what that means? I'm not sure. I have to figure that out. Um, and if I do that, then since my tension is kind of all over the place, I'm going to have to kind of swatch first and see how that goes because... You know they have to the columns have to line up i think for it to look good right and so if i have fingering weight and then dk and you know the the tension is off or the gauge is off then one column could be wider than the other and it won't line up and it won't look good so that's the only thing that's kind of um iffy still i have to figure that out and i have to um i have to figure out what needle size is and what i'm gonna do basically <laughs> For sure, for the DK, I'm going to do a US 3, and then I have to swatch um, fingering held double and just fingering and see how that plays out column width wise, if that makes sense. <sighs> that was a lot too. I hope, you, I hope that makes sense. So I'm excited to start that. It's going to be something that I kind of just grab and just work on. And also there is an area... Well, every time you start, you um, you pick up on the side of the column. But what I just didn't want was a lot of um, weaving in because you're changing all the colors. But there is a video linked to this pattern that shows you how to weave in as you go. And I'm really excited to learn that because I feel like that will help me with a lot of things in general, like a lot of other projects. So I think this is going to be really good. It's going to use up some of my scraps and it's going to be a beautiful big blanket when it's done, hopefully. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about sewing and then I'll talk about a little bit of shop updates. So first off, I have been sewing a lot. I have been sewing more than I normally do. I just kind of get into my I don't know, I, I get motivated to do different things. And right now it's been sewing. So I've been sewing a lot. And I wanted to share what I've been sewing. So, so a few months ago, I made this here. And I am not very prepared. I don't even know what these patterns are called, but I will find them and link them all down below. But I was attempting to use waxed canvas, which is this really beautiful canvas that just has this really pretty um, wrinkly effect when you fold it and stuff and I absolutely love this this is big this is so big I love it it has two pockets here on the front and it has this adjustable strap and on the inside I have a magnetic closure and I have this really pretty fabric I thought it complemented it really nicely and I have a whip in here that I haven't worked on, um, which is brioche. And I will talk about that at a later date. But I do love this bag and I want to use it as an actual like purse. 
Um, but I'm currently using another bag for a purse. So this is another bag that I made. This is the Bonnie bucket bag, I believe. It has um, this really pretty closure on the top. This is my hand sanitizer. Um, and I have an adjustable strap. I kind of made it like cross body, but I could also make it just like, you know, for my shoulder. And I have this really pretty like orange citrus fabric on the inside. I don't want to show too much because it's literally my purse right now. It's what I'm using. And I absolutely love it. This is a modified version of the Bonnie. I think it's called the Bunny, the Bonnie bucket tote again I'll link it down below but um, it usually has a zipper on the front which I did not do and then I um, it actually is supposed to have a zipper up on the top but I decided to add these grommets and like a drawstring closure and I'm really glad that I did I love the way it looks and I have been experimenting more with like this um, leather look I, I guess you can say so that is my newest bag I love it it has this like oval bottom construction and I definitely want to make another one maybe a little bit shorter with the actual zipper I don't know I love it though and I, I definitely need to make another one so a few more bags that I have been making um, like I mentioned earlier I went to California a few months ago and um, my mom and I were sewing a lot um, we made a lot of bags my mom made way more than me uh, but this is one of them that I made so it has pockets here in the front and then it has a zipper um, closure up on top and it has like a pocket on the inside I love it it's gonna be a project bag for something <laughs> and let me see I also made this is very wrinkled right now but I made this tote as well which by the way I it's so hard for me to sew a round bottom I, I really struggled with it to be honest I need to practice more, um, but it does have this drawstring closure. And I do currently have some yarn in here for some socks that I want to cast on eventually because I can't do everything at once, right? So there's that one. Again, I will find the patterns for all these and link them below. Um, some of them are modified though. so. Then I, I think I showed this one before, I'm not sure. I think I might have shown this before, but this one is big. I love it. I love it. It currently has my um, knit along in here and it's actually, this will come up in a drawstring close. Let me show you. So this one currently houses my knit along. So since I've been sewing a lot, I have been making a lot of project bags in a different style and I ended up really liking it and I actually started adding it to the shop. I recently announced it yesterday. Um, but this is the style of bag. It is a tote bag. And I put a closure here, like a snap closure. And it has pockets. I really, really love it. I made a few versions. These are all for myself. <laughs> I made this um, flamingo one and I have my Stephen West um, project in here because it's just so bright. I just wanted a bright 
bag to go with it. And then I also made this one. This one does not have a pocket in the back. I was experimenting, but I think I like pockets on the front and the back. And this one houses my socks that I'm working on, my DK socks. And then, let's see. I think those are all the bags that I made for myself. Um, yeah, I think that is it. Uh, like like you can see, I've been loving sewing lately. I, I have been experimenting a lot. Um, I've been experimenting a lot with vinyls and faux leather and stuff like that. So I've kind of been um, loving that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit of shop news. So first of all, since we're talking bags... Um, this is the new style that I've added to the shop. This one is actually available right now. There's only one available. Um, so you can kind of compare. This is the version that I currently sell. I've had a lot of great responses to these drawstring bags. Um, there's something so satisfying about that drawstring closure. This is the small size. It has pockets on the inside. Now, this one um, just sold yesterday, so this is not in stock anymore. Um, I have to actually ship it out today, but I wanted to show it before I shipped it out. Um, so this is our small drawstring bag. We offer small, medium, and large drawstring bags, and um, it's kind of just whenever I make bags, I put them up, and when they're gone, they're gone until the next batch that I make. Um, I'm really busy with yarn dyeing and then um, I have another I have a decal business as well which I don't think I've really talked about but I'll talk about that in a little bit but I'm usually really busy but when I have time to sew up some bags I do and I put them up on um, on Instagram and I announce it on there um, so right now we have very limited amount of bags but this one right now is available I'm excited this is the front side there's a, a metal snap closure right there. But I'm excited to offer a different version bag. And I've been loving these so much. As you can see, I made myself a whole bunch of them. And there's something so satisfying about a tote that you can just snap and have with you. Um, I actually take this a lot in the car. And I put my phone in here in the front. And it's been working so great. I love these so much. So I'm excited um, about this fabric. Um, and yeah, that, that is the newest bag update in the shop. So we also have, um, two sets of these left. These are the small drawstring bags and they are a set with these beautiful yarns right here. These are the fun in the sun mini set. So this is, let me see if I can remember funfetti bubblegum, purple potion, tequila sunrise, pink dahlia, sunrise, and berry burst, I believe. And I'm selling this as a set together. There are two left and I'm kind of secretly hoping that maybe there's one left that I can keep. <laughs> um, but I think this is super cute. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I love the summery feels to this and summer is coming to an end and I just wanted to throw up a few summer bags before that happens. Also, speaking of um, those colors, a lot of those colors were in the Swapless Swap, which I have talked about previously. That has all kind of passed now and those 10 new colorways are now in the shop and I have most of them to show here. So I wanted to show you those colorways. So here is Funfetti, Bubblegum, Pink Dahlia. This is Berry Burst. Tequila Sunrise, Purple Potion, 
Sunrise, which this is the color I'm using for my Stephen West shawl. Love that color. Um, Seize the Day. I need to make something with this. I love this so much. And um, this is Glow Party, which has been so fun. This one actually has fluorescent dyes and it does um, glow in um, under black light. The only other color that is not pictured here is called Mint to Be, M-I-N-T, Mint. It's a beautiful mint green color and I ran out of that one so I don't have it here to show you but I will um, insert a picture of the 10 colorways here. was a lot of fun to do I'm just so happy with all of these bright and beautiful colors and we do have several um, of these colorways in stock right now so we are currently not doing dye to order due to COVID shortages as well as advent priorities which I will talk about here in a moment but dye to order has been put on hold until probably January of next year so whatever is in stock is in stock I will try to update um, the shop probably every um, two weeks I would say and I am starting to dye fall colorways I'm really excited about that so yeah I am excited about some new colors but there are um, there is currently stock of these beautiful bright colors um, we have a lot of decay we have some worsted I think I have um, several fingering weight in the glow party colorway and there's a few cashmere bases in there um, fingering weight as well so that is it for the new yarn colorways now i really quickly want to talk about advent 2020 because i'm so excited this is my first advent that i'm doing i am so i'm having so much fun dyeing these colors i am so motivated to dye them i have several colors that I absolutely love and I'm so excited to share them. I I want to just start knitting with them already. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really excited. Advent is still open for pre-order if you're interested. I, um, I am doing two different versions or two different options or offering two different options. I am doing a, um, you know, 24 minis with one full skein and I'm also offering a bonus surprise um, add-on, I suppose. So I will link that down below if you're interested. It is still open through the end of September and then um, beginning of October, I will be dyeing all the yarn and having it shipped out by the end of October so that everyone has it on time to open December 1st. So really excited about that. I thank all of you who have already purchased an advent. I'm so excited for what is to come. I have a lot of extra little goodies and stuff that I'm really excited to um, share with everybody. So that is it for advent talk. Okay, well, I think that is all that I have to talk about um, in terms of like crafts and shop update news and everything like that. So I just want to talk a little bit about what I've been up to, why I have not posted in such a long time. And honestly, a lot of that has to do with Animal Crossing. I fell down the rabbit hole. I, I did not craft for a few months because I was obsessively playing Animal Crossing and I still love it and I still play it every single day. Um, but I have found a little more balance in my crafts and my Animal Crossing. And so if you are playing Animal Crossing, please message me and let me know what your friend code is so I can go visit your island because it is a serious issue. <laughs> um, it's actually, it's really bad. And I'm not even ashamed of it. I love it so much. I love it so much. I have been working on my island. I have been um, terraforming and trying to decorate everything. I think I have every item. Yeah, every item I think I have cataloged. Not clothing, clothing wise, but like all the actual like furniture and stuff. I think I have everything cataloged. So if you're looking for something, let me know. Um, other than that, I have 
slowly started crafting again as you can see but the majority of it was Animal Crossing apart from that I also started um, making sourdough bread I I don't know this whole COVID thing started and I feel like I started seeing a lot of pictures of sourdough bread and I just got curious about it I found out how much work it was and then I was like yep yeah, nope not for me and then a month later I don't know I don't know what happened but I started working on my starter which if you're not familiar takes a few weeks to get a good starter and um, I have made several loaves of sourdough bread and I have posted a few of them on my um, crafting Instagram page I'm getting better at it but I haven't made bread in probably a month now which is which is weird because I was making a loaf every week and I was loving it I even bought a Dutch oven um, so that I can make it and I have like my husband has a um, you know like the thermometer things that go in the oven and all that so I was actually having trouble because we live in such high altitude that it has a weird effect on food and and so I had to keep adjusting things but I, I feel like I have a pretty good recipe now and I actually have to make some of that pretty soon because I haven't had it in a while and it's so good I was having a slice every morning with my coffee and surprisingly it didn't it wasn't a bad thing like I was like oh man I'm having bread every morning this is not good but no nothing really happened I think if anything um, you know you know everything that goes into the bread and it's not you know processed and stuff so it's actually really really delicious and I've been enjoying that very thoroughly I have to make some very soon um, what else let's see I also chalk painted a hutch that we've had for years that I've been wanting to do for such a long time I chalk painted it which I'm not familiar with chalk painting but I looked into it I chalk painted it I bought wax and I never waxed it so that's something that I still have to do but I will insert a picture here and I think the blue came out beautiful I love the color I did have a lot of trouble with the top of the um, like the wood part I try to sand it down and restain it because I didn't want to chalk paint that area but I don't know if I just didn't sand it very well or what happened but you can see like the streaks and stuff and it's just not um, staining um, it didn't want to stain evenly so my husband tried to help me we did it like three times and he's into woodwork like he you know more or less he knows what he's doing um, and for whatever reason we just can't get it even and we kind of um, left it like that and we're like oh we'll have to get back to it because we were having my sister come visit and I just wanted to get the hutch back up and organized and it's just been sitting there and we haven't fixed it so I, at this point I might just leave it it might just be fine I'm just picky and stuff but I do love the way it came out and um, as a matter of fact, when I went to California to visit my family last month, um, we found an old sewing, an old sewing machine, but they're the ones that are built into the tables. Um, my mom's, one of my mom's neighbors down the street, they had a yard sale and they were selling one. And so my sister ended up buying it um, for $20, which is such a good deal. And we chalk painted it and my mom had never chalk painted before either and I told her well I had just chalk painted the hutch like not even a month ago and it's so easy and all this stuff so she was like okay let's do it and so my sister and I and my mom we went and bought chalk paint and everything and we chalk painted it and it came out so beautiful And since then my mom has become obsessed with chalk painting and she has bought more chalk paint and she has been just chalk painting everything <laughs> it's really great though it looks so good everything's looking so good and I love that you don't have to sand stuff with chalk paint and yeah I, I absolutely love it if you haven't tried chalk painting I highly recommend it um let's see 
The only other thing that I wanted to talk about, I guess, is um, a quilt that I started, which I don't even have. I have it here, but it's just all cut up and you can't really tell what it is. But I started the swoon quilt with Cassie. We have been wanting to start this for like years now and we finally decided to just start, start it and she got a block done and it looks beautiful. I think she showed it in one of her episodes. I'll try to find it and link it below. It looks so beautiful and I've been trying to just get one block done and it's so much work and yeah, I haven't gotten much progress, but I'm hoping that this weekend I can find some time so I can put a block together and then I'll be able to show you guys next time. Hopefully some progress on my swoon quilt. Um, I really, really, really want to get to that. And oh, one other thing. Hold on. So I had actually purchased this at my local fabric store and this is the snow day um, kit. It's a Christmas quilt kit. Looks like that. This is by Moda Fabrics. It's a snow day kit and it includes everything you need to make this quilt. And if you know me, you know I am obsessed with um, Christmas. I love Christmas, it's my favorite holiday. And I saw this and I just had to get it. I love this so much. It's beautiful and I really wanna start it, but I'm trying to not start it until I finish my spoon quilt. I, I need to be realistic with my time. I have so many things that I want to get done and I just don't have the time to do everything. So I need to be realistic. I need to try to be good and not start everything. Um, so like I said, hopefully I could get some progress done this weekend on my swoon quilt and show it next time as well as my knit along and all the other things that I talked about. There's a lot that I want to work on and so little time. Um, quickly I'll touch on my decal business I have a decal business I don't talk about it much it's something that I just I don't know I've been doing it for a while now and it's something that it that's just like my job that's my uh, main source source of income it's something that I love to do and um the yarn business is also something that I love to do but I will consider I do consider it my um my second business or my second priority I, I would say um but we do do decals for like the yetis and laptops and car windows and stuff like that if you're interested in decals we sell on etsy and amazon and i will link that down below um it is something like i said i really enjoy doing my husband helps a lot with that and actually, um, because of this whole COVID thing, he's been home a lot more. His schedule's been a little weird, but it's been great because he's been able to help me a lot with the decal business. Um, he's very familiar with it. He knows how to do most of everything besides the things that I handle, like inventory and things like that. But it has allowed me so much time to work on the yarn business and to add new bags to the shop and add new you know sets and add um work on colorways and work on advent and all that stuff so it has been great yeah i think that is all that i have to share oh really quickly my husband got me a new iron um two days ago he surprised me with it and i was so excited i called my sister and i was like i got a new iron and she said only in your household would that be a good thing because She's like, if my husband got me an iron, I would like hit him over the head with it. <laughs> I thought that was so true. I didn't think about that, but I was so excited to have a new iron so I can be more efficient when I'm making my bags. So, and I think that is all that I have to share. I hope this video isn't terribly long. I think I went through everything. Like I said, it's been a while since I posted a video. So I knew that there was going to be a lot to share. Um, and I'm really hoping to stick with the schedule and kind of um, film a lot more frequently. Um, definitely not weekly, but I'm hoping at least once a month, um, if not every three weeks, give or take. So again, thank you guys. If you're still here with me, thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you guys later. Bye guys.